Hello Wolfpack, Bitcoin has broken down from the ascending wedge formation. That is an immediate sell signal uh, for a Bitcoin position you may have had. Now we bought Bitcoin on the break above 23.8K on the daily candle, came up a little bit. Ultimately, it was ascending wedge formation. We dropped back down. The candle closed here at around 23.3K. We're copying about a two, a, what, a one and a half to two percent loss there. Not really too much, nothing to be overly concerned about. But ultimately, yeah, we did break to the downside. So that was a loss in the trade there. We broke below this ascending, I guess you could call it an ascending triangle. It's not quite an ascending triangle on the RSI. And we've seen the stochastic RSI top out and come downwards. Now, I want to take this video as a moment to reiterate some of my views because a lot of people are getting confused. I honestly don't know how people are getting confused. It's not complicated. I've had the same view on Bitcoin since like 60K. Like, it's really not complicated. But I'll just say it again. I am macro bearish on Bitcoin because we were in a macro bear market and I am predicting as per the four year cycle date range trend that we bottom out in Q4. Now, with that said, that does not mean I can't say that I think, you know, the, the bottom is possibly in. That doesn't mean that. Because a prediction and an opinion are completely separate. And a prediction needs to be invalidated for it to be invalid. Until it's invalidated, it's still valid. An opinion can flip-flop whenever it wants. So this prediction, which is my prediction, as, as a Q4 bottom on Bitcoin, which means we go down to Q4, we find a Q4 bottom on Bitcoin, that prediction is invalidated upon a break above 28.6k, which is the critical bull market level. Now, this does not mean I can't say uh, the bottom is possibly in, or even I think the bottom is in. Those are completely separate things. Me objectively looking at the macro and saying, huh, that's interesting. That could lead to a bottom. And the prediction being invalidated, they're separate, right? So that prediction is still valid. If you ask me what my prediction is on Bitcoin, my prediction is we bottom out in Q4 and the invalidation point for that prediction is a break above 28.6K. If you don't understand that, I highly encourage you to understand that there is a difference between a prediction that has to be invalidated and an opinion that you can flip-flop whenever you want because there's no... An opinion is not necessarily based on concrete ev evidence. It's just a it's just a feeling, right? Predictions are based on concrete evidence. So that's that's just a clarity there, just a bit of clarity. Hope that kind of clears things up for you guys there. Uh, yeah. So now what we have on Bitcoin really, and just getting into the analysis a little bit, is we have four days until the candle close. Now we saw the FMOC minutes meeting yesterday uh, or earlier today, uh, and what we have is four days until the candle close on the weekly candle, and we're still hovering above a 200 week SMA. Losing that would be pretty bad for Bitcoin. As you can see, there's really not much in the way of support below the 200 week SMA. Yeah, we have brief support at 22.6K, and then the next support is actually 21.5K. But if we go back to this macro uptrending line, we can see that's actually approaching at the moment 20K. So it's getting close to that 21.5K region, which would be the nearest support below the 200 week uh, so yeah, if we lose the 200-week SMA on the weekly candle, which would be a close below 23K, that would pretty much guarantee at this point a retest of the macro uptrending line. And the interesting thing about that is that we've never retested that macro uptrending line twice in one bear market. And we're already seeing weakness around it, right? You, a little bit of a small screen here, but what you can see is that when we retest this macro line in 2015, for example, we saw one strong wick bounce back up off of it and never touched it again. 2020, one strong wick bounced back up off of it and never touched it again. Now, we've actually seen, yeah, one wick rarely, but then we hovered around it for like six candles and now we might be coming back down for it for another retest and that would probably lead to a breakdown, right? So if we do lose a 20-week SMA here, I would say it, it's, it's, it's probably more like, well, look, it's, it's relatively likely, I'm not going to make any big predictions here because I honestly don't know at this point, but it's relatively likely uh, that we actually go down and lose that, that macro uptrend line. Now, what is important about that is that if we do lose that macro uptrend line, that would be an instant sell signal. Losing that macro uptrend line, this yellow line, on the weekly would be a bang, 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 instant sell signal. There's no other way around that because below that, there's nothing until around, what, 13.8K to 11.5K, which is a support zone that I've outlined for months and months now. Uh, if I had to guess, if I had to predict at this point, I would say if we did lose that macro uptrending line, that would be the region, that 11.5K to 13.5K, that Bitcoin was to bottom. Now, we have some brief support at the 300 week SMA, but in my opinion, it wouldn't be enough, right? I think if we lose a line of that much importance, of that much macro importance, it's mean, you know, existing on Bitcoin since 2011, 11 year support line, going down 10% to the 300 week SMA or 13% wouldn't be enough. We'd need to go down more, right? A major breakdown calls for, a major breakdown of a major support line calls for a major breakdown in price action. And so I would say that right now, 
you know, right now, what, what is it? Mid-August, okay? The prediction that I've made is a Q4 bottom. Q4 is in a month and a half, okay? It's not long. It's actually not very long away at all. And so we are really coming to the point on Bitcoin where in terms of time frame, at least, we are a lot closer to the bottom, a lot closer to the bottom than we are to the top, okay? Now, it's the price that is very concerning. And, and one of the things I would say to you, and this is how to re react to the situation, right, is this, right? It is not certain that Bitcoin bottoms out in Q4. It is what I would predict as per the prediction, but it is not certain by any means. In fact, I'd say this probably just slightly over a half, like slightly 60% maybe. It's really not a confident prediction of mine, but it is what I'm predicting at this point. What we can do is this, okay? If Bitcoin breaks above this yellow, see this yellow big line trending from November 2021 through to March 2022, if we break that line, that in my opinion would be a buy signal on Bitcoin. And you could take that buy signal up to that 28.6K level for the major retest of major importance. And if you break that, that would be an ultimate full buy signal for Bitcoin. And once you break 28.6K, mate, there's literally nothing left. Like that's that's it. The bear market is over at that point. That is the critical level flipped once more. Uh, and not only is it the critical level as per the, the, the PA, but it's also the critical level as per something like the bull market support band. And if we brought up the 50, uh, uh, the 200, 200 day SMA, for example, that is training down towards that level as well. And by the time we get there, breaking 28.6K would be a break of a 200 day as well. So yeah, I think that in terms of the, like the most safe buying place, the safest place you can possibly buy Bitcoin in the foreseeable future, it would be a break above 28.6K. Uh, the best risk reward ratio uh, in which you can buy Bitcoin in the foreseeable future uh, would be a break above this macro downtrending line, right? And uh, if we're talking about short positions, the most the best risk reward short you could take would be a weekly close below this macro uptrending line. So I hope that outlined a few things for you there. Now it is worth noting that the S and P 500, for example, uh, is coming up a major resistance as well. It's one of the reasons we rejected on Bitcoin, and Ethereum's doing a similar thing where it's coming up on major resistance. So yeah, the market is at, is at a very very strong resistance point right now, and I think the reason why we actually came this high, uh, and and this is one of the reasons why I've said in the past it's really not outside of the realm of possibility that the bottom is in. I've said that because of inflation topping out. Inflation, you know, topped out. And at the same time that inflation topped out, the numbers weren't released yet, but this is what it was. The S&P started, started pumping and Bitcoin started pumping. So it's very clear that inflation topping out led to this rally. And so if inflation continues to be topped out, right, which we'll know by CPI and we'll know by oil prices, et cetera, if it continues to be topped out, it continues falling month on month, uh, year on year, you know, we can, we can assume this rally is going to continue, but if that was a fake, you know, a false flag or whatever inflation keeps going up, you know, that, that, that would lead Bitcoin to keep going down. You know, it really is up to the macro at this point. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why over the, over the last, what, three, four, five weeks, the Q4 bottom prediction has lost a lot of its uh, prior strength, right? If you ask me back here in, in, you know, any time before the last month, I would say it's pretty much 80% certain that the Q4 bottom plays out. Now I'd lower that down to 60%. It's still my prediction. It's still what I predict. If I had, if I had a gun to my head, I'd say Q4 bottom. Uh, but, you know, it has definitely lost a lot of uh, validity in its argument due to the macro, uh, which by the way, is, is very unpredictable unless you're an economist essentially, because, you know, how am I going to sit here as a chart analyst who trades altcoins, uh, you know, with triangles and wedges and indicators and say, I know how to predict what inflation is going to be year on year. I'd be simply lying to you. I don't know that. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm kind of just going off the data in the same way other people are here. Uh, but yeah, I just thought I'd point that out. Now, what's interesting as well is that the S&P 500 has only corrected during this major recession, uh, 25%. Uh, and so, yeah, look, honestly, like, you know, it, it seems as though it should go down, especially considering the fact that 25% has only brought us back to levels we saw in November, 2020. Uh, you know, in a period of time where the S&P was getting inflated massively as m massive amounts of money was being printed. So yeah, I, I would, look, if if it was up to me in, in guessing this, like, it wouldn't make sense for inflation to be topped out this early, but it's not. Like, I'm not an economist. I don't necessarily know that. Um, now, what I do know is that the Federal Reserve has stopped uh, raising interest rates uh, you know, in terms of magnitude per rate hike. So we had a 25, we had a 50, we had a 75. All right. So that was three increases, not only increases, but increases in magnitude per rate hike. And then we saw a 75. So it flattened out, right? So we kind of went like, you know, uh, you know, 25, 
uh, which was there, a 50, a 75. You can see that's an upwards trend. Even rates are going up each time, but the magnitude is going up. And then we saw a 75 again, it flattened out. So that could be indicative of maybe the top for the interest rate hikes are in as well. Maybe we'll go back down to a 50, which will be bullish for the market. This is what I mean. There's so much, there's so much here that is up to the macro that like, it's very hard to predict. I want you guys to really understand that. This is probably, I would say, one of the hardest to predict times in the crypto market since since probably, you know, let's see here, since probably, you know, probably even November 2021, to be honest, where like a lot of people thought it was going to go higher. And then we saw that, that almost double top formation. And then we're looking at the RSI. Well, what's going to happen here? It's it, This is probably the hardest time to predict for the entire year. I mean, you look back at the bear flag here in, in, in January to April 2022. That was the easiest bear flag prediction I've ever made in my life. I remember making videos for like two months when that was happening, saying that was a bear flag, we're going to go down. And everyone was like, no, 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 you're an idiot. It's like, that was the most obvious thing I've ever seen in my life. This is not obvious. This is very confusing. Because for TA, it really doesn't look too great. And then... The Q4 bottom, the four-year cycle predicts a Q4 bottom, but then at the same time, inflation's topping out and interest rates are possibly going to go down in magnitude and the S&P's pumping into resistance and it might break out. So it's like, well, what the hell are you meant to think? And I think that's why, you know, there's, there's been a lot of confusion in views here. Uh, but I, I, do, I do stand by what I said before. Uh, the only thing we can really do is know how to react Knowing what to predict and knowing what to think about this is, is, is a little bit of a hit and miss situation. I think reaction is the best way you can do it. Uh, and that's why, you know, that's why we're selling on this breakdown here. That's why we're getting out before this breakdown potentially gets worse. That's why, you know, if we break that macro trending line, we're setting up a short position. That's why if we break this downtrending line here, we're setting up a long position. That's why if we break 28.6K, we're buying. You know, there's heaps of things we can do to react. Uh, and I think reactions are, are stronger than predictions because you can have all the predictions in the world. You can predict everything that's going to happen in the entire market. But if you don't have the right reactions, you're not going to make money. Uh, so yeah, I think reactions are more important than predictions here. That's what I'd say to end the video. Uh, before we end it though, I do want to just quickly shout out and give, give a reference to Wolves of Crypto VIP. If you want to become a VIP member on this channel, click the join button on my YouTube homepage and you can see all the perks you'll gain access to there, which includes four trading setups per week on altcoins, prioritized reply to comments, a two-hour lecture on market psychology that you've gained access to, and an exclusive Telegram group access where you can discuss charts and signals, etc. with other VIP members. We've got about 160 members in the our VIP group, our VIP membership group, and then we've got about 200 VIPs. Uh, so about 40 people here haven't chosen to join up to the group yet maybe they're just interested in the signals whatever uh, but if you want to become one of the members there uh, you're joining over 200 people and then of course we've got uh, BitGet which is what we use for the VIP members so every single VIP member that signs up to Wolves of Crypto VIP is very much encouraged to sign up to BitGet because it's what we use for the actual trading itself and every member who watches this channel for free I'd recommend you sign up as well using my referral link in the description below to help out the channel and also help out yourself because you'll gain access to a reward center uh, but on top of that this exchange has half the fees of Binance and it's non-KYC on your personal end, uh, which lines up with the values of crypto quite well. So you don't actually have to connect your identity to the exchange. You can choose to do that if you want to, uh, but you don't actually have to, which is great. Uh, so sign up using my referral link uh, to gain access to that exchange. There takes five minutes. And then also the Become a Trader Crypto Academy course. Uh, the Crypto Academy is a company myself and Megawell Crypto actually created at the start of this year. Uh, we've released a course like teaching people how to trade, teaching people TA. If you're interested in learning how to trade, learn TA, uh, you can become uh, one of the 59 students there by emailing us here at cryptoacademycourses at gmail.com and we'll get back to you with all of the relevant information. So thank you for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video uh, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.